Professor Weizmann, there are different policy paths for implementing global carbon pricing. Uh, in your opinion, do we need a global uniform price or it is also possible to have different regional prices? From an economist's point of view, uh, welfare is maximized throughout the world if we have a uniform carbon price because that means that every country uh, and every firm with every country is expending the same amount of effort to uh, uh, to mitigate, to uh, to cut back on, uh, on on carbon dioxide emissions because they're all paying the same price. So this is the most desirable to have a coordinated price. Uh, uh, but I think. Uh, 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 below that, in terms of desirability, but still not fully undesirable, is to have different prices. So there would be some minimal price, maybe, that every country would pay uh, internally as a kind of a tax to themselves. Uh, uh, but some countries would pay more. Maybe underdeveloped countries would pay less to themselves. More developed countries maybe would pay more. The least desirable is to not have coordination at all, to not be working towards uh, some goal. It's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. Some price on carbon uh, is better than uh, a zero price on carbon or what we have now effectively worldwide. There's actually a subsidy on carbon dioxide emissions because many countries subsidize coal or uh, oil uh, uh, consumption. Could you describe the problems that occur when several states negotiate allowed carbon emissions as compared to negotiating carbon pricing? A uniform carbon price in terms of something like an internal carbon tax uh, has some advantages that are often cited. Uh, one is that administratively this is easier to do a tax than than a uh, than a uh, cap and trade system uh, within the advanced countries like within the U.S. or perhaps within the e EU. Uh, it's administratively not so difficult to have uh, a cap and trade system, but in terms of the world as a whole that would encompass developing countries like China and India and Africa. Here there are real questions about administratively how this might be done on a worldwide level. Another advantage of prices or internal taxes over uh, cap and trade over a quantity-based system is that in a quantity-based system, something like cap and uh, with, uh, going over into something like cap and trade, uh, the quantities will be fixed, but the prices will fluctuate. And on something as important as energy, I don't think the public can tolerate very much price fluctuations. Uh, they will get upset. Uh, they will blame Wall Street. Uh, so uh, a guaranteed price, I think, is safer than having a quantity, but a price that fluctuates. And I'm worried, frankly, that if you instituted, if you tried to institute something like a worldwide cap and trade system, that these price fluctuations, uh, if they were severe enough, could discredit an entire economic approach to this uh, problem. How could poorer countries be compensated for their costs? Uh, remember that uh, if you have, if the countries are taxing themselves on the basis of carbon dioxide emissions, they are getting to keep the money. See, this is a very important point. Uh, it, they're not being taxed by an outs, and it's often a misunderstood point, they're not being taxed by an outsider. So this money is not actually leaving China or India or the U.S. It's being collected within the countries, and uh, uh, that's much less of a burden. As a matter of fact, uh, it, uh, there's a lot of argument to be said that it's better to tax bads like carbon dioxide emission than goods like capital accumulation or like labor. Uh, when the question's put that way, it doesn't maybe sound so unattractive. If you want to reduce deficits, is it better to 
reduce taxes, to, to increase taxes on labor, or is it better to increase taxes on carbon? So sometimes it seems that carbon pricing is not feasible at all. I think it's easier to get agreement on a uniform price or a minimum price than it is on various quantities of emissions, because if there are a bunch of countries involved, then there are a bunch of different emissions. If there's really only just uh, one uniform tax, uh, then there's more of a focal point and there's less to argue about. What are the different political steps that have to be made in order to reach such an agreement? I think you need to get agreement uh, that uh, uh, we will agree to some minimum tax, internal tax on carbon. Each country will agree to have some minimum price on carbon. How they do it is their business. They could do it by cap and trade. They could do it by actually taxing. But they're going to. We're go the world is going to put a minimum price on carbon, and somehow uh, there's some mechanism by which they will negotiate this. Now it's a minimum price, which means that somebody can put a higher price if the EU feels it wants to have a higher price on carbon. It can have it if the U.S. feels it wants a higher. It can have it. But the idea is there is a minimum price. And once this is injected into the discussion, the hope is that maybe we can raise this minimum price over time.